You are looking live at a daily chart of the NASDAQ. Welcome to my daily review. Today is Wednesday, August 14th, and the NASDAQ had a follow-through day on uh, Tuesday. <laughs> so did the S&P and the Dow. But um, today, you know, you expect after, you know, the index to be up 400-something points that it would give some back. You know, and it did consolidate a little bit. It was up 407 points yesterday, 2.43%. And today it consolidated a little bit. It was down quite a bit during the session, but managed at the end to get some volume and, and close higher. There you can see this consolidation, profit taking. And so that that's a good sign. That's a healthy sign that the index was able to, you know, eke out a little bit of a gain. It moved through its um, 21 EMA today. It's uh, you know it's 0.3 percent above the 10 and 1.5 percent. Excuse me, 1.5 percent above the 10, 0.3 percent above the uh, 21, and 2.1 percent below the 50. It was up, you know, four points at 0.03 percent with the lighter volume, but. After a 400 point move, you'd expect to give some back and it actually ended up flat. So to me, that's a good sign. You know, we saw the, um, you know, bigger picture that this big run here in a 16% correction peak to trough. And, and you know, there's a lot of um, uh, fear on the yin carry trade down to the 200. So it's kind of a textbook bounce here off the 200, but um, it, it it needs to get through the 50. It's it's just got a lot of work to do. And, you know, we had a follow through day, but what I need to see are some, you know, leaders flashing and I'm not seeing that. And that's what's concerning me about the, uh, the move. You know, the NASDAQ looks, you know, like it's rebounding nicely, but leaders should be flashing and they should be easy to see. And we want to follow the leaders and there's just not a lot of leadership you know, so far, you know, it's only day, you know, the second day since the follow through day, but, you know, we need to see some leadership. They should show up pretty quick here, flashing, uh, and it should be easy to see. It should be so obvious to everyone, and we're just not quite seeing it. I'm going to go through some stocks here in a minute, but I just wanted to show you the, you know, the SPY follow through day yesterday and, you know, eked out a, a little gain today, similar to the NASDAQ, maybe a little stronger than the NASDAQ because uh, the SPY is poking its head above the um, 50. It closed just a tick below it. So there, if I zoom in here, you can see it's 1.4% uh, above the 10, 0.9% above the 21, and just a tick below the 50. So if it can rally through the 50, that, that looks good. And then the Dow is looking, you know, a little better. Here is it uh, rallied through its 50 yesterday on its uh, follow through day. Here it was up 1% uh, with uh, average uh, volume above the prior session. And then today, eh, you know, three quarter of a point move, that a percent move, that's uh, that's pretty strong above uh, 40,000, back above the 40,000 level. So it's only 30 stocks. So I really don't follow it that closely. And then the IWM, you know, this one's trying to, poke its head back above the uh, 50 as well. It's 0.7% uh, below. And then the MDY, the uh, S&P mid-cap 400, once again, you know, could be uh, seeing some resistance here at the 50. So these indexes have to power through there um, soon. And um, all right, so I, I'm mentioning, well, first of all, I'm gonna go through the MAG7, just a perfunctory perusal of these stocks. Apple, you know, traded uh, below its 50 with the uh, yen carry trade scare, the fear, everybody's in fear. And now it's rallied back above. It's been up one, two, three, four, five, six days in a row with, um, you know, declining volume, which is not what you want to see, but price pays. And now it's back above uh, 220. Microsoft, yeah, you know, traded below its 200. And now it's meeting resistance here at its uh, 21. So we'll see if it can power through that area. Google, uh, they got slammed, you know, they lost their suit with the DOJ. Now I think the DOJ is going to want to bust them up, which might not be a bad idea for Google uh, to break up their company. Um, it was down quite a bit today and then actually rallied back. If I look at the five minute chart, yeah, it really sold off hard. And, um, you know, then the 
saner people came in and, and bought the stock up. I don't think it would be a bad thing if uh, Alphabet did um, break up the business. It's worked well with, um, you know, GE recently and 3M. So, um, yeah, I wouldn't be opposed to that for if I was Apple. Um, could be a leaner, uh, meaner company. But it got rejected here at its 10 EMA, which is pretty clear to see. And this is what you don't want to see if you own the stock, you know, a vertical violation, you know, just selling, selling, selling gaps down, plenty of gaps in that chart. And then it takes forever, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven days to rally back up to a moving average. And then gets shot back down, you know, more than 2%. So that's a nice resistance there at the 10 for Alphabet. Yeah, like I said, there's a lot of technical damage with these charts here that's been done. Meta looks much better. Um, this one undercut its 50, you know, during the yin carry trade scare, whatever. And um, earnings, you know, we're, we're through earnings. And I think a lot of it had to do with high expectations for earnings. They met expectations. It was buy the rumor, sell the news. And, and now what? Now we look forward to the uh, back half of 2024. And I think Meta's looking pretty good. They're spending a lot of money. Uh, but I think Wall Street trusts that uh, Zuckerberg will... Um, I get return on investment here and um amazon another one spending a lot of money with google uh, and nvidia is reaping the benefits this one uh, sliced its uh 200 uh, with earnings and now it's taking forever to rally back up so that doesn't look good that looks like a bear wedge pattern as well and then the um tesla tesla yeah um below the 200 eh. This one is struggling mightily, 1.4% below the 200. Uh, yeah, and, and at the 200 level as well. So 200 SMA at the 200. <laughs> uh, 200 is a magic number for Tesla. It's just not doing anything. Uh, hard for me to get excited about stuff like that. NVIDIA has momentum off the, off the yen carry trade low there. That $90 level, if you got it that day, man, what a deal. And now it's, I think it's going to have resistance here at uh, 120 or the, uh, the the 50 SMA there. It's 120.15 today and it's 1.7% below it. But if it can rally through um, that uh, 50 SMA above 120, I, I like uh, NVIDIA. I would like to buy that if it does have the power to do that. We'll see if it gets rejected or if it can power through. But I mean, it's up, you know, nearly 30 bucks off that low of uh, last Monday. So um, anyway, that's it for the Magnificent Seven. I just, you know, have to show it because those, that, those are the stocks that move those indexes that I showed you earlier, except for the, you know, the the MDY and the IWM. This is a Broadcom um, semiconductor play. Keep my eye on this one. You know, it sold off like everything else. You know, we had this steep correction and now it's trying to rally back through its 50. And actually closed today right at its 50. So definitely one to watch here. Um, showing strength. Um, monolithic power systems. This one undercut its 50 and now is rallied back above. So this one's showing strength as well. You could say that it, uh, you know, broke above this downtrending line here. So uh, that was on uh, Tuesday as we had the follow through day. So a little give back today, but that's okay. That one looks pretty good. Applied materials reports tomorrow. Uh, I think that's one of the few semiconductor stocks reporting this week. Undercut the 200, now rally back above. They're going to need a strong report uh, to get that thing going back above the uh, 50. So a lot of technical damage with these charts. They just do not look good. And I'm not seeing much leadership here, you know, in the tech sector, um, which is, you know, NASDAQ predominantly in technology. So we need some leadership. We're not finding it. AMD just wallowing below its 200. This is doing absolutely nothing. Um, the Jim Morrison trade, been down so long. So what are we seeing? Uh, you know, I hate to say it, but the defense <laughs> defense stocks are doing well. This is ERJ, made a uh, new high yesterday and was flat today, but still looking you know, pretty good. Northrop Grumman making a new high today. You can see this big base. I got to show you the weekly on these, you know, defensive names. That's a, um, you know, stage one base and it's trying to push away from it. I should actually have this one on my ready list. I just, I've had defense stocks recently and they've worked out well. I had a CW on there. This one's doing well. This is Curtis Wright. 
uh, you know, it's just, gosh, it's hard for me to, um, you know, if, if, if the defense stocks are leading, then the rally's in trouble. I'll just say that this is a low quality follow through day with just very poor leadership here. GE just flat doing nothing, marking time. MRCY, this one, I believe they reported today and had a nice uh, response here, up 17%, closed at $40, breaking out from this base. I bet you this looks great on a weekly chart, doesn't it? Yeah, that's a nice breakout of a stage one base. So it had a sell-off for <laughs> years and years, and now it's starting to move again. Um, you know, I don't want to poo-poo any, you know, rally or stock that's going higher. It's just defense names are not what we're looking for and at this stage of the uh bull market you know maybe with um interest rates coming in uh maybe we're going to get some different type of leadership anyway the defensive names and eh. also the insurance names man the insurance is strong this is bro uh just surfing it's 10 ema you know looking good you got to admit these are looking good i mean this is what you look for in stocks uh, Hamilton Insurance, this one made a new high today. Um, not, not real big on the insurance stocks, but PRG had this one on my ready list a couple weeks ago. Um, PGR, Progressive. Yeah, this is in, in this base here and now broke out today. See what that looks on the weekly. And yeah, see this consolidation here. This is why I had it on my ready list. I kind of, you know, took it off and forgot about it. But man, nice move up five and a half percent this week. So progressive looks good. Um, uh, TRUP, uh, Trapanian, Trapanian, I guess. It's an insurance company. These insurance companies going up is not a good sign either. Um, you know, as your insurance rates are going up, but you could see this earnings line heading due north, stocks up 7% this week. Um, another just strong, you can see the group is, uh, that group is uh, 10 out of 197. Oh, oh. all state, you're in good hands. Uh, up 5% today, trying to break out of this base, but it's still near a buy point there of 177.37. This one I could throw on there. Earnings line heading due north, different group, property and casualty, 107. And so you got to kind of watch that. Um, uh, Allstate, though, yeah, looking good, making a nice, strong move today. And anyway, if the insurance uh, companies and the defensive names are leading and the tech is just kind of underneath their moving averages, it's it's uh, things need to change for me to get excited I'm going to show you a couple of uh, groups though, that is showing some leadership here. The drug names, Eli Lilly is the top stock for me in the drug group that, you know, it's got the earnings and sales, you know, growth, the acceleration here, 28, uh, 26, you know, 36, and then, you know, 59, 86% uh, earnings growth. So this, this looks fantastic to me. Um, yeah, I own uh, Lilly. It undercut its 50, then rallied back through, you know, if, if this is going to be a leader in this new, um, you know, as we have the correction and then the indexes have a follow today, and if we're going to have a rally, then we're going to have new leadership. Lily's kind of like the old guard. And if that wants to lead like NVIDIA, that's fine. Uh, but I don't want to have insurance and defensive names leading. And uh, yeah, that's, that's not, not a not a healthy situation. Uh, so I'm looking around at some other drug stocks besides Lily. Halozyme Therapeutics looks pretty strong. This has got um, you know some you know earnings growth. It's decelerating, uh, but let's take a look at this on the weekly chart. You know, just a breakout and a very strong stock surfing its moving averages. You can see the earnings line heading north, and you know this is a company with sales and earnings growth. This is not one of these uh, speculative biotech names, and it has a. Um, uh, 7 billion market cap. So it's not a tiny little speculative biotech name. Halozyme is you know one that just jumps out at me. A-L-N-Y. Um, surfing it's 10. So, you know, that's showing strength after the breakout here recently. Um, so some other um, names that I'm looking at, A-D-M-A. You know, you can't find this sales and earnings growth here. These guys have it in space. You know, I listened to their conference call and I think they're going to do well for a while. 
you see the earnings line heading north and that's going to drive the stock higher. Um, I, I really like this one. Um, that's ADMA. And then SIGA today, the monkeypox stock, <laughs> it's up uh, 12 bucks here, a 26% move. Uh, you know, I took a swing at this one today just because I, I heard the news and I was having a discussion with my friend and he just convinced me to just take a little small swing at this one because if something does come of, you know, monkey box, which I hope it doesn't, um, this could be a, a big, a big winner. You know, it's just a tiny 850 million stock. So highly speculative, you know, doesn't, uh, you know, um, <clears throat> it it just passed through its um it passed through its buy point that's why at 1070 and that's the only reason why i took a swing at it just a small position just to see how this plays out and you could also do moderna i think that would be part of the um you know the monkey pox play but uh, I'm, I'm i'm not a fan of moderna i'm not a fan of downtrends like that at all anyway that's it for the drug stocks there's a few in that group that look good. So I've got to go to the um, software names. You know, I want to see some software and some semiconductors and hardware names, you know, breaking, breaking out, breaking the new highs. And that's going to show me some leadership. And GoDaddy is one of them that is showing leadership. The group is not very strong, 120 out of 197. But this is this is one that's just uh, surfing. It's, it's a Kelly Slater stock, surfing its moving average. It's been really strong for a really long time. Um, so you ride that trend till it bends at the end. And uh, this is definitely the uh, leader of this group. Another stock in the group is Palantir. I, I don't really care for Palantir because of the you know super large uh, supply here. So it takes a lot of demand to move that supply, but the stock is doing well. So I have to um, call out uh, Palantir. Um, you know, making new highs above 30 looks good uh, for Palantir. So if you own that one, congrats. I don't, I, you know, I, I I missed, you know, the pullback to the 50 and the, the move higher. So Palantir looks good. Another one is ZETA, Zeta Global Holdings, obviously, you know, breaking out of a base here. Gapped higher following earnings and then pulled back due to the market weakness with the yin carry trade. Yeah, made it up to 25.53, then pulled back to the 21 on that uh, Monday, August 5th, the Monday that will live in infamy. Uh, was, everybody's scared. There's so much fear, and it, it uh, delivered some good prices. And now this one's just trading higher, uh, up to 24.63 today. So um, Azita Global Holdings, one of the one of the software names that's uh, doing well. There's, there's not a lot of them. Uh, F-U, uh, excuse me, F-O-U-R-4. Shift for payments. This one's forming a nice little base here. And I would not wait, you know, for, you know, this buy point at 92, I think around 80 here. This is a good buy from that old, um, you know, these old highs here at 79, 79, 20. I think, you know, if you get it below 80, that's not bad there. Um, so anyway, uh, four looks good. And like I said, there's not a lot of them and the group is not that strong, 125. So, you know, these are kind of uh, lone wolves. We need a pack of dogs trading higher. We're just not getting it here. Fortinet, you know, they reported earnings last week and they blasted higher. And uh, it's been, you know, I was gonna put this on my red list, but it's just too extended here. Yeah, on the seventh, it blasted higher twenty five percent, and it's trading higher now. But it's you can see right there, it's nine point one percent above this ten. So maybe if it trades sideways around seventy there for a couple sessions, you might get in. But I I like the strength. You know, I'm looking for strength. I'm looking for new leadership. You know these stocks that I'm showing you here: you know, Zeta, GoDaddy, Four, Fortinet, and an old one, Palo Alto Networks. Maybe this one can come back. You can see it consolidating in that base there on the weekly chart. And then on the daily here, undercut the 50, and undercut the 200, and now it's rallied back through uh, both of those key technical levels. They're going to report earnings on the 19th, which was uh, Monday, Monday of next week. So let me go back to the weekly chart on Palo Alto Networks. A couple things here is, you know, the earnings line has been trending north for a long, long, long time. It's been consolidating in a base. They did some uh, accounting changes and it kind of threw off Wall Street, you know, with, with their billings and everything. But this thing is a cash cow. I mean, uh, you know, 
$6.45 in cash flow, 147% return on equity. They have zero debt. Um, and if you're if you're into you know fundamentals, this company has fundamentals in space, but I need the technicals and the fundamentals to align for me to get long, you know, in a in a full position for um Palo Alto. And I would say that uh, 345 90 is a nice area to get in. But the problem is, like I said, they have earnings next week. So do you want a big position in front of earnings? Mm, not really. Um, I believe in this story. I believe this is a long-term winner. If we look at the monthly, you know, since uh, it's IPO, you know, it's one of those IPOs. It didn't take long. You know, it had this institutional due diligence phase in the advanced phase. And this thing's just been a monster. Uh, Palo Alto Network's definite monster stock. But look at the group here, 166. So pretty tough to get long. Um, and then the last one of the software names is ServiceNow. This is an oldie but goodie, but it, it's shaping up in a base here. I kind of like this uh, consolidation pattern. You can see it's a stage three base with the earnings just gradually. These guys are a machine as well. This is an AI play. And... Um, it looks good consolidating in the base. It's got the sales and earnings growth that you look for. It's just, you know, like I said, the, the um, with a follow through day, you know, the, you want to see in the next few sessions, another follow through day, the NASDAQ up 1%. You want to see leadership emerging and uh, we're not seeing it right now. And it's a little concerning for me. Um, let's take a look at some of the retail names, uh, <laughs> kind of a specialty retail, the auto company, uh, Ferrari, uh, the ticker symbol is RACE, you know, broke out today following an earnings report. It's got this big volume. Uh, you know, if if breakouts can work in this new uh, rally, that would be fantastic. This would be one to watch for sure. Um, you can see the early earnings line heading north and it's up, you know, nearly 8% this week. So just keeping an open mind here um, and just, you know, Ferrari could be a new leader. So could SE. They reported earnings. You can see the blue dot, the RS line rallying through the um, moving averages. This one looks fantastic to me. This is a retail internet Singapore-based company. And you can see this consolidation here. This, this looks pretty darn good to me. Uh, stage one base, eight weeks of consolidation. Uh, that looks fantastic. Uh, 76, uh, 60 buy point. So Keeping an eye on that one. And then ONON, they reported earnings as well yesterday. Had a nice rally. Today, pullback just had an inside day consolidating gains. Uh, that one looks good as well. You know, we'll take a look at the weekly chart. And you can see this is a stage, uh, is stage one, stage two, stage three, really. Um, you know, market surge has it to the, th the third of a second stage base, but Earnings line heading north, which is what we like to see. Their shoes are selling well. Their apparel selling well. And that stock could be a new leader with uh, some of the other, you know, shoe stocks faltering with the uh, slowing consumer. Another group that I want to see get, get going here, and I really can't complain about TMDX. This one's been a monster. But with new leadership, you want to see new highs and, you know, powering higher. And this one's just kind of going sideways, you know. Um, can't complain. I mean, it's above its moving averages, uh, you know, just consolidating here and a little flat base pattern here, a shelf, if you will. Um, but yeah, it's 3.7% uh, above the 10. So, you know, just marking time. But with the new rally, you want to see some stocks really charging and bolting out and making new highs and just flashing. And we're not seeing that yet. So far, it's early. Uh, but this is what I'm searching for. Uh, intuitive Surgical certainly could be one. Uh, this one, I believe, made a new high today of uh, 473. Very nice. You can't argue with new highs. that It's coming on lighter volume. And people are really concerned about the volume. But in the summertime, you're going to get lighter volume. Uh, that's typical summer trading pattern. And usually after Labor Day, uh, you know, the first, uh, what, Monday in September, then, you know, uh, the, the volume starts picking back up again into the uh, October, November, uh, December timeframes. And let me see, do I have one more here? Um, a couple more, actually. Sintessa Pharma, this is a medical research equipment. You know, I just acknowledging this breakout today, 14% move. I didn't really look into this one too much, but that's a nice breakout. Looks kind of like SIGA. 
<laughs> um, probably not a monkey pox play, but there you can see uh, stage three, it's kind of a later stage base, 19 weeks um, in consolidation in that base. That's a nice symmetrical base. And then we have the breakout today. So, you know, something to watch uh, for. I'll have to look more into that stock. And then Cardinal Health, they uh, reported earnings and they had a nice pop on earnings, nearly 4%. With volume, so Cardinal Health, but you know you can see it's still consolidating within a base. You could say that it maybe you know broke above that you know downtrend line here, kind of, kind of, kind of. Nice breakout for Cardinal Health. Uh, do I have any more here? No, that's it for me. Thank you for watching. What we're looking for is you know obviously the index to cooperate. You want the index, you know, uh, individual stocks to lure you in. You want to buy stocks that are flashing strength. And uh, we're not seeing that yet. It's, I don't have a whole lot of stocks. It's set up in bases. I don't have a whole lot of stocks flashing strength, making new highs. And just, they should be obvious. They should be like peacocks flashing their feather. Like, look at me, but we're just not seeing it here. So that that's a big concern for me. Anyway, that's it for me. Uh, thank you for watching, except for... In honor of the great Steve Jobs, I have one more thing, and that is Cisco Systems reported earnings this afternoon. I did not look at any of it. Um, it's one of my favorite companies because what it's done for so many people in Silicon Valley. But you know that that was that was then. You could see it's up more than six percent. You know, you could see it, it has a long way to go to get to those old uh, that those old highs of the early two thousands. Yeah, of eighty two dollars. So. Probably will never get there. But anyway, Cisco up uh, it's over six bucks after hours. So probably a pretty decent report. That should help the networkers, man. Back in the day, if Cisco had a good report, <laughs> the whole market would be up. This is ASTS Space Mobile. This has been a rocket ship. Reported earnings down 4%. Probably some profit taking here. So not a big deal. They're at $20. The DLO, this one usually moves a lot after... Uh, Earnings, you can see it's been in a clear downtrend, not moving much after hours. And then STNE, I believe this is a Warren Buffett stock. Uh, yeah, kind of flat after hours. So I'll have more on that in the morning. Anyway, thank you for watching at mcstockcharts.com. We never give up.